Welcome to the next America. I love behind the scenes. Every time I have a guest on in the intro, you guys dance. Every time I see you guys, it makes me happy. Hey, tonight is an amazing premiere, whether you are watching live or you watching the playback. We want you to know you and I, what we do today depends on what happens in the next America, which is why we're here. We believe in what God is saying. And so Christians, it is time to wake up because God is doing amazing things, but he's waiting for us to be part of the solution. And so why would I not bring Robert Hodgkin on? Robert Hodgkin and I met over three years ago now in Phoenix where I got to serve him on his show and the ministries. He is the founder of Men on the Front Lines and Robert Hodgkin Ministries. He also serves as one of the core leaders of Patricia King Ministries, who she was on a few episodes ago. Robert hosts the weekly Heroes Arise broadcast. He co-hosts the show Propel with Patricia King and is a regular guest and co-host of Supernatural Life on God TV, where he has interviewed me. It was very fun. And he's the author of several books. And let me tell you, Decrees for Men, which thank you for gifting that to my husband and I. We love it. I have read Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will and Emotions. Amazing. He wrote a book called Be the Solution, which I just felt the Lord on that to announce, hey, go get that book and we'll pop his um We'll have a dress up here in a little bit. And Divine Union, Decrease for Heavenly Marriage. And you have so many other books, but I have personally read Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions and Divine Union. And I am not a big reader. So if I done near read a book, it's good. All that to say, hi, Robert. <laughs> hi, my friend. It's great to work with you again. You too. This is long overdue. It really I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to be here with you. You're amazing. Your husband's amazing. I love what you guys are doing. I love your generation. And it really is a privilege to be here with you and your audience. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I'm excited for you guys to hear from Robert. He is like such a pure black and white sound. Like there's no mixture in Robert. And he's so quick to apologize and repent. And he's so quick to be teachable. And just I've heard so many stories about Robert and and just his authenticity and vulnerability as a leader, we crave and we need and we desire in our generation. And he loves millennials and he loves Gen Z. And to me, that is crazy powerful because we want to be led by people who love us. It's really hard to serve people who don't love us, even though we're called to serve them sometimes. But it's really easy to serve somebody like you, Robert. And you have been speaking up a lot about America lately. And you have a really profound sound, and we are addressing the body of Christ today. So I just want to dive in here and ask you, start off with this question. What do you see in the next America? Well, you know, I think that's what we're contending for right now. That is such a great question. As, I, as you and I have communicated behind the scenes, I love the title of your show. I think it's prophetic because we are contending for the next America. And you don't have to be very prophetic to see that, Jamie Lynn. It's going on everywhere. It's going on in the news. It's going on in government. It's going on in our streets. We can see on display right now what the enemy is doing and his idea for the next America. We need to be aware of it but not freaked out by it and not afraid of it. Because as you and I have talked, one of the things we need to be aware of is God's tone has changed for this season because God wants to get our attention and he wants to help us contend for the next America that is revival, that is reformation, that is a great awakening. I'm 56 years old. I've been a Christian for 17 years. I am so excited to see what is coming to America because God has not changed. God is not done with the USA. God loves the USA. God made the USA. Yes, there are things in our country that need to be dealt with, but God has a plan, and every one of your listeners is a part of that plan. So what I see for the next America is us waking up to the opportunity God is placing before us to be difference makers and solution bringers. Right now, we can see the wickedness. So God is empowering the Daniels and the Josephs. Right now, we can see the darkness. So God is empowering the Marys so that we can birth something together. None of God's promises for this nation have changed. They are still yes and amen. The situation's changed. The landscape has changed. Media has changed. Our streets and cities have changed. But God's promises have not changed. And we need to be aware of that. We need to see what's going on and be aware of it, 
but also know it's time for us to really press into those promises because the great awakening in America, we were all excited about a few years ago, Jamie Lynn, it's still God's promise. We didn't think this was going to be the setup, but none of this is taken God by surprise. So I see a very serious hour, a very somber and sobering hour, but in it, I see the greatest opportunity we've ever had as the church. We are being presented with an opportunity to have more impact in this nation than maybe ever before. And that's what I think we need to focus on. You know, I love, I love that. Yes. Yes. And amen. Um, one of the things that you just said, you know, we went into, we, we closed out 2019. I'm like, what year is it? <laughs> I'm like, this season has us all confused. Like what, year, what is today? God, no. Um, I am like living off of a calendar now, which I didn't before. Um, but anyways, we came out of 2019 and into 2020 with all these amazing words about this is what God's going to do. And this, and so I love what you're saying. So I would like you to speak to that too, a little bit on, yeah. on how, how we got here, but also, um, and I believe there are some, a few people who recognize the shaking was coming, you know, and I feel like side note, one of the things I've learned is that when you know something amazing is coming, there's going to be a testing, there's going to be a shaking, and that is where we get to see what we really believe. And so I could go on and on, but this isn't about me. I'm here to interview you. Would you speak into, would you speak into this a little bit more, you know, how many discouraged Christians there are thinking, oh my goodness, we thought this was going to happen. And this was happening, like our economy was thriving, this was going yeah. on, the church looked amazing. And, and we're, we're helping Christians, we're helping give you guys tools to be able to see what God is doing, to hear what he's saying, and for our minds to conceive that it's true and that it's good, but that can only come from the Holy Spirit. So what has he showed you? How can you speak to us? Help. Yeah, two biblical examples to help give us some context and understanding of the hour that we're in. Number one, the first one I should say, is to me, one of the things the Lord showed me when he was talking to me about how his promises are still yes and amen is what, what's happened is we've hit a storm. And it's really no different than when Jesus said to the disciples, get in the boat and go to the other side. There's things to do over there. He went up to pray. The disciples went out. You know, I wasn't there, but I can imagine. We're a lot like them. They're a lot like us. They're probably thinking, yeah, Jesus said we're going to the other side. Let's go, man. And there's cool things to do over here. It's going to be awesome on the other side. So they're rowing. They're all excited. Then they hit a storm. And they get freaked out. And it says in scripture, they began to labor at the oars. They began from fear and not understanding and thinking, I thought he said we're going to the other side and now it's raining and thundering and it's crazy and we're getting swamped. They start in their own strength to deal with it. Jesus sees this. So what does he do? He walks on the water, literally putting on display, literally putting on display. Hey, all of this is still under my feet, boys. When he's walking, he's not just walking on smooth water. He's walking on the huge crashing waves. The wind is buffeting. And he's walking on that saying, guys, this is still literally all under my feet. I'm walking on it. And, I'm, and it says he intended to pass them by, Jamie Lynn, not because he wasn't there, not because he didn't care, but because he wanted his church to wake up that in me, with me, and for me, my the, your situation has changed, but my word and promise has not. Okay. So in this situation, speak to the storm. They didn't get it. He gets in the boat. He models again. He's not done with them. He didn't say, I'm finished with you, mooks. I'm done. Last straw. I'm out of here. He said, okay, let me show you one more time, guys. And then they get to the other side. So I believe that what has happened in the USA is we've hit a very real, a very big storm, but we need to deal with it. And one of the other words God has given me, and this was at the this was like the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, if I remember the timing, but I'm like you, it's all blurred at this point, where he said that the church is coming into an Exodus 14 moment. And we really need to get back into Exodus 14 and read it from beginning to end because the beginning and end bookends are really important. When we read it closely, we know what happens. They're out in the desert. They've been set free. They're like, yay, God set us free. He's the best. And they're coming out of bondage. And then all of a sudden, Pharaoh and his army start pressing down on them. Now, most of the church or God's people freak out and start murmuring and complaining. We were better off in Israel or sorry, better off in Egypt. At least we had leeks and onions. Why did you bring us out here? They're murmuring, they're complaining, and they're freaked out because the storm is coming. Pharaoh and all his army. 
Moses starts to say, God will fight for you, do something. And God says, no, you do it. And he's not saying you do it because I'm not there and I don't care. He's saying, son, remember the encounter we had at the bush. Remember what I told you about who I am and what I'm going to do. Remember who I told you you are in me, with me, and for me. Remember how I empowered you supernaturally. This is where you step out into it and extend your staff and speak to the storm. Now, one of the things to give context to what's going on, we need to understand, Jamie Lynn, at the beginning of Exodus 14, when we look at it closely, it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart to pursue his people. Well, that doesn't sound very nice, does it? It's brilliant. Why? Because the other thing God did that we need to be aware of is for his people, he established a boundary so that the enemy could get at him. So we'd be aware of the enemy and what he's doing, but couldn't get to him. Right. And then he reminds Moses, put me on display that I'm with you and I'm for you and I've empowered you. Moses steps up into that. And then what happens? Ultimately, at the end of Exodus 14, the whole plan all along was this. Not one of Pharaoh's army remained alive. So, yes, we've hit a storm. Yes, the enemy has been stirred up and is coming against the church and the nation. But what's happening? Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. Okay. Why? So the unbreakable, unshakable kingdom will be revealed. But that begins with us remembering God's promise is still in this. What we're seeing right now is not the enemy winning. It's the enemy being set up to be completely and totally taken out. Not the people. Or we fight not against flesh and blood. So right. don't get irritated and angry. God didn't in Genesis 1, God did not deal with darkness by releasing more darkness. God released light. So we go after the powers and principalities, realizing as challenging as this is as real and serious and somber as it is, this is also a divine setup to see everything that's come against this nation completely taken out if we will stand in our place as dominion stewards, that every man and woman that's part of the remnant and hopefully even the church itself will stand up remembering who God is, what God has said, what he has promised he wants to do in this nation and how he's empowered us. And very quickly to end this, some people might be thinking it'd be easier if I had that staff that did those cool things. That'd be a reminder. Jamie Lynn, you know it and your audience knows it. We have something greater than the staff of Moses. We have the cross of Calvary and we can look to the cross and realize God is not here to destroy this nation. He loves this nation. He gave his son for this nation. There's not one of those people, you know, publicly on display mocking him or one of those people scheming in the background that he did not die for. And we must stand up in power and extend the love, the mercy, the forgiveness, but also the truth and the power and principality destroying light that will shatter those things that have come against this country and we will see every one of the enemy defeated and we can see the greatest America that's ever been. Yes. Yes. That is so good. I'm like, I feel like we were just at, we're like on the front lines in our battle gear and you were like, what's his name in Braveheart? Yes. You were on the front giving us the speech. William Wallace, one of my William heroes. My, fam my mom's family's from Scotland. Yes. I honestly, and, but here's the thing. This is real. What you're yeah. saying is real. It's not like a movie. Like this is our life. And because it's a spiritual battle, I mean, I think people, even in the natural people who aren't used to talking about the spiritual, maybe the spiritual things would even freak them out. Maybe they're not believers yet. Maybe they're like, go to church on Sundays, like check it off the list kind of people. So like, they don't know about the spiritual like what's really happening, even the eyes of those who haven't seen are about to see the, the bandaid be ripped off. Like they're going to feel it. Like they're going to see it. And it's going to either, it's either going to be still, this is so weird, but this is what's coming to my mind. A bandaid is about to be ripped off. Okay. And there's either still going to be a wound or it's going to be a really healed, beautiful, like, no, like maybe there's a scar because we'll always remember what happened, but it's stronger than it was before. Like we have this in our hands. And so yeah. when you say this, even um, I think about even this time of shaking. And one of the things that stands out to me is how um, 
I love this moment and I love this time. And in a way, I'm really going to miss it. And before anybody starts freaking out, because yeah, yeah. my husband and I, thank you, Jesus, you've taken care of us, have taken a hit from this season. But it drew us into him and what the Lord has revealed and what like we have come out of this season, even though it's not completely done, but we're already stronger than we were when we came in. And it's not too late for anybody to experience that by leaning into him and, and experiencing what Robert is even talking about, that we really have the ability to be the ones. But if you look in the word, the ones who were leading were very few. The ones who had eyes to see, very few. The ones who had ears to hear, very few. And it's not those that are filled with pride and arrogance. And it's not those that think they know the way. It's those who know that there is only one way, and his name is Jesus. And so practically speaking, Robert, when you look at this generation and you're like, this can be the best, practically how? Like, I know there's people tuning in. Practically, what can we do? How can we... Put on the full armor and be part of this solution. I think the easiest thing is to, to ask God for a battle plan. And it's going to be different maybe for everybody. Like I know, and I know you know about like um, God gave us as he's given so many wonderful believers and ministries around the country. Second Chronicles 7.14. God is a how-to God. Yeah. God is a love God, but he's also a how-to God. I mean, when, I, when I've talked to people who are really, you know, desiring revival in the glory realm, I love revival in the glory. I love when it manifests. But I've been in meetings sometimes where people are like, we want no parameters. We want nothing. And I've said, well, that's not exactly God. If you look in scripture, every time God plans some big move, especially Old Testament, he was very specific in how to create the space for the glory, for the freedom of the Holy Spirit. And I believe if we ask, he'll do that for us right now. Like 2 Chronicles 7, 14 is brilliant. Mm -hmm. If my people who are called by my name, that's us. Right. That's, at, that's at least the remnant that wakes up to that and grabs hold of that. But it's to all the church. If they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So this is not based on whether or not that politician that irritates me turns from their wicked ways. It's based on if I turn from mine, like yeah. even dying to irritation and not releasing that darkness, but choosing to release light and love and life and hope. If we'll do that, God very clearly says, I will hear, I will forgive sin. I will come and I will heal the land. So what we each need is that simple but profound, which is the kingdom in a nutshell. The kingdom's not always easy, but it's always simple. And if we do those things, those simple things, like I interviewed some guys this week, neither of them are in ministry, they're, they're, but they felt they heard from God to do this worship thing on a mountain near where they live. They sent out, they were like, we don't know how to do this. We're not in ministry. We don't have a church. So they sent out all these emails, dozens of emails to churches and ministries. I found out later that I was the only person that replied. And because I'm so busy, it took me two weeks. So they don't get any response for two weeks. And then they get one response from somebody they barely know and have never heard of. But the beauty of it was they said, what was great about that is we decided we're going to say yes. We're going to do what God told us to do. And I just got a report from them this morning that the, the first one they did is great. They're going to do another one. So God has a battle plan for each and every one of us. Just like David, it's not going to be Saul's armor. And what that means is what works for you may not work for me, but we're going to work together and cheer each other on. I'm not going to tell you you're doing it wrong. I'm going to cheer you on as you do what God's told you to do. And if, by the way, halfway through it, I realize, I don't know if this is God. Let's not waste time beating me up. Let's let's encourage each other to say, hey, but you stepped out. Get that battle plan. You're part of the solution. Let's go for this together. That's really what it boils down to. And then very quickly, the generational thing. And you addressed it. And I do love your generation. I do love the ones younger than you. I see you guys as brilliant. And my job as a guy in his, I'm 56. So as a middle-aged white dude, my job is to come alongside of all of you and if I have some wisdom to share with you, I will. But uh, now anybody who's listening of my generation or older, let's not tamp down the zeal of the millennials and the Zs. 
That's what's beautiful about you guys. You will go out in the streets in a moment. I love that. So then we just add a little wisdom and we get fed your zeal. It's not a one-way street. You guys feed me more than I feed you. I love being around your generation. You guys are the anything's possible. I've learned from you guys. If I don't know how to do something, go on YouTube. I'll know in a half hour. I love your generation. That's so true. And to speak to my generation in Gen Z as well, we have to honor the fathers and mothers of our generation because you guys have walked through things and you have historically seen things and you have learned things that our history books do not communicate anymore too in this day and age that we cannot have history repeat itself when God showed us so many times how we can learn from those who've gone before. So to remain teachable in this journey alongside people who don't tell you what you want to hear, who believe in you, love you and encourage you, but who tell you what you need to hear because when it comes time to a battle, you don't want somebody to tell you something that's gonna get you killed. You know what I mean? You don't want to, you don't want them to like say, no, you're fine, when really there's like you're surrounded. <laughs> no, if you go that way, you'll be surrounded. But if you go this way, you'll be surrounded by heaven. You know, like what what are we what are we doing? So I believe it's super important for us to understand, no matter how old you are right now, we have something to give one another. And the enemy hates strong, powerful relationships, especially cross-generationally, because they are so powerful and they fuel the kingdom of heaven and they bring delight to the Lord in his heart and they help us go further. Like I want Gen Z to go further than I am right now at 33. I want the 23-year-old to be way further along than I am because I want my kids to be five times ahead of where I am now spiritually um, with prosperity and relationships and everything they touch and their spiritual gifts and money to circulate kingdom, you, whatever tools it requires, we should want that. And if we don't feel that way, we don't need shame, but ask the Lord to give you the heart to do that because that is going to be required in this next America because your best friend might end up doing what you've dreamt of doing your whole life because for some reason the Lord gave them that, but God has something different for you that's better than what you've dreamed in your heart. And I just went on this tangent, I know, but I also know awesome. that needed to be shared too. And and yes, and and I love this, I love what you're saying too about this unique, like it is our responsibility, which how amazing is our God? Can we can we just how amazing oh. is God that He would say, I created you guys in my image. And you know what? If you listen to me, I'm gonna give you some like legit plans. Okay, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'll give you everything you need to accomplish it. But you just have to do it with me because if you don't do it with me, it's quite impossible. But if you are willing to lose everything that you're seeing that you think you need and you follow me, like I have some legit plans for you. Like God trusts us with his plans. He's empowering us. Isn't that crazy? And Jamie Lynn, we're, we're being presented the opportunity the church has cried out for for 2,000 years. Yes. We've been wanting to see God use us to initiate a great move that will impact nations. We have that opportunity before us. And you and your, your revelation of the cross-generational thing is huge. The Ancient of Days was not threatened by baby Jesus. <laughs> They were on the same team, man. And I realize that theologically I'm blurring some lines here. But think of that. He could be the ancient of days and the baby Jesus all at once. The ancient of days didn't look at the baby Jesus and go, no, that's going to be chaotic. It's going to make a mess in the diaper. No. The ancient of days was, yeah, man. And the baby yeah. Jesus was like, father, I'm here for you. That's our model. Yeah. That's so good. Even the wise men. However many of them there actually were, plot twist. Um, those that came to honor a baby because they knew who he was. Like that is surreal. That's good. Honor. Yeah. That's crazy to me. I Sometimes I just think, oh, I have so much more. I have like the more I learn, the more I realize I just don't know anything and I have so much more to learn. <laughs> That's crazy. the front of the journey. I don't know that that ever changes. And I think it's great that it doesn't because we're always yeah. learning. You know, Jamie Lynn, one of the things I've been saying, and I know many other voices have as well, is the Lord keeps hearkening me back to, to see the, a great awakening in the United States of America. We need a great awakening in the church. 
And that's not a guilt word. That's not a condemnation word. That's not a, that's not a, yeah, we really do. Cause the church has been awful. It's a, everything we're talking about. We need to wake up to the power of prayer, the power of an individual plan, the power of cheering each other on, the power of generations working together. When we wake up to that, we're going to see the great awakening because now it's not just one Moses with everybody else murmuring, complaining. It's a generation. It's multiple generations. It's me seeing the Moses in you. It's you seeing the Moses in me. It's us seeing the Moses in those we get to serve. And what does that mean? That means we get to cheer them on, champion them, say, you're part. I mean, every Heroes Arise broadcast begins with, you matter, you're important, you have a key role to play for the kingdom and the earth. Because it's true. Every single viewer, even if a non-Christian is watching, they're like, what does that mean? You were created by God to be part of a solution in the earth. You're just not awake to it yet. So the great awakening that we're going to see in the USA will begin with a continual great awakening in the church. And what we're getting right now, a lot of these really serious, weighty, even scary prophetic words and warnings and dreams and visions, they're real. And God is saying this could happen, but it doesn't need to because I have a plan and you're a part of it. We were talking before we went live about how what this is, is an alarm clock. God is getting our attention, waking us up to the seriousness of the hour, but the seriously huge, brilliant, glorious opportunity we have in this hour. And the alarm clock is only irritating, Jamie Lynn, if we don't respond to it. If we try to stay asleep and bed, that alarm clock, you know, we're, we're whacking at it. But Cheers. if we respond, <laughs> exactly. If we respond to the alarm clock, what does that mean? It means we're going, yeah, there are great things to happen today. I can't wait to get after being part of God's solution today. So it's not either or. And none of this is to say the people who have brought the weighty, serious, a little bit scary words that they're off. No, that's God's alarm clock. Mm -hmm. And that is God's tone changing to get our attention. Yet, it's not a doom and gloom message. It's a message of eye-opening empowerment that we can step into. That is so good. This is like, I love this alarm clock thing because, you know, you're on Facebook and there's alarms going off left and right and they're not all from the Lord. But I mean, at the same time, they are because it's the, it is, it is the climate of our nation. So I guess it is. But yeah. I just yeah. think too, if you hit snooze too many times, you oversleep and you miss it. And if you get up, like you said, and wake up, you can be part of the solution and see that we get to be part of the answer. Like Jesus is the answer and he put it within all of us. And it's not going to be the person that is empowering you to go be the change. It is literally going to be you. How many times do we need to tell somebody like, wake up, you can be part of the solution. And it begins with prayer, which we need to go to Firewall USA before we like tell people about Firewall because it's a great response. But I love, I love, 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 love the alarm clock thing. I mean, I just love how the Lord's been speaking to you and how, how much love you have for the country. Clearly you've been praying. And I want to encourage other people too. If you are not praying for our country, please do not speak up about our country. Because wow, you can tell good. when somebody has been praying and when somebody has not. Because if you've been praying, you will be marked with the fear of the Lord. You will have love for people who are lost, who are broken. You will know that it's not too late no matter who they are, and you will realize that your thoughts do not matter. What matter is what God is saying, and you have to be filled with hope and belief, and that requires prayer in relationship with God. And if people haven't been praying, then I believe they're the ones that are getting caught up in the war zone on Facebook comment section or reposting things that, you know, maybe it's true. Maybe it's, maybe it's a fact, but maybe God's truth is what needs to be shared, not that not that come article. on no? come on and and i think that we've just got to wake I, I feel like this is there's so many different hidden nuances within the alarm clock word that you're giving i cannot wait to see what god shares with it, every single one of you who are tuning in god still speaks today i cannot wait for him to share with you what alarm clock what he's wanting you to wake up to in the morning as soon as this morning you know as the solution for what is going on because I want what he has, and I know that you do too. It's going to be good. Okay, I have another question, plot twist. Do you think it's important to vote? I do. I absolutely do. I think it's critical to vote. Um, we are in the world, but not of it. But that means why wouldn't we want to take advantage? I eat every day. 
You know, I mean, why wouldn't we, well, unless God's calling me to a fast, maybe that's a horrible analogy, but yeah, I think I, you know, I, I drive a car. I could walk. I drive a car. If there's a tool available to me to make me even more impactful in the earth, why wouldn't I? Now the challenge is when we're looking at candidates across the board in every race, there's never a perfect one. Yeah. And they all have personalities. And we all have personalities and some personalities, you know, rattle us. So what I tell everybody, I say, please understand the importance of voting. And what I recommend is take the personalities out of it. Look at not what the ads say, but what their history says, their agenda says, what's their platform? What are they saying they're going to do? And then really look to see. Now, they just say that to this audience, but they said something. So look at the platforms of the candidates, and I'm talking from local government to our next presidential election. Totally. Don't let don't let the devil get you to not vote for the right person because maybe you don't like their personality. Right. And don't let the devil to get you to the wrong person because you like how they seem, but when you look at their agenda and policies, they're anti-God, yeah. anti-Christian, anti-America, anti-unity, anti-prosperity, anti the things yeah. God had yeah. for us. Well, I just wonder, what would I have thought about Jesus' rhetoric when he was here? Speaking in parables all the time, I would have been like, you wow, know, right. I mine. Come on, let's get real. Drink your blood and eat your flesh? Is this right. a Bram Stoker novel? No, that's a perversion of the true thing that Jesus was saying. Yeah. And he even said, I know this is offensive to some. Look, sometimes what the kingdom wants to do in the earth is offensive to some. So get past, don't give place to offense, especially something as silly as a personality or, yeah. or um, like that. Look at what lines up the most with yeah. kingdom truth and kingdom agenda. And then I think it gets really easy to vote. Yes. And you can go do that by going to the Democrat platform, Republican platform, Libertarian mm -hmm. platform. And you can look at each one of these people, their websites, and you can just click the about section. And you can see and if you've been in the word and you've been with the Lord, it, it really does not take long to know who, who's protecting, who will protect Christian values and who will protect um, the value system that God gave us to protect us. Okay, so diving in here real quick as we close out, um, let I'm going to throw this up here, um, firewallusa.com, which we are both a part of in prayer. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Yeah, real quickly, firewallusa.com makes it easy for you to be part of the solution, and we're going to make history together for Jesus in this nation through prayer. Firewallusa.com, all you have to do is go there and hit the join link. When you do, it'll lead you through a very simple process. You can also go to prayer and grab hold of the uh, 12 decrees and the 12 prayer points. And with that, praying in tongues, it'll be easy to pray for the nation for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have a video from the wonderful Patricia King where she leads you through an hour of prayer, if that will be helpful. But firewallusa.com is us rallying 24-7, every moment of every day between now and the election, we yeah. have prayer going for the United States of America, declaring God's truth and love and plan for this nation. Go to firewallusa.com. Join us. We yes. are going to make history together for Jesus, and you can be a part of it. Absolutely. And I want to answer this and clear the air. The prayers, the decrees and the prayers that are on the PDF document for Firewall USA are not geared towards a platform or a candidate. No. It is literally no. the word of God over our nation. And that is what yeah. we need to be decreeing. And it's beautiful. And I love what God has done in my own heart by being a part of prayer with my mother and I committed to the same hour. And we FaceTime every Tuesday night from 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Right and on. pray for an hour. And let me tell you, it's beautiful. Okay, yep. Robert, you also have some amazing, you have man camp coming up soon. Yes, we are praying into that. It's in California, October. Oh, I don't have the dates in front of me. I think it's October 8th through 10th, but a great chance to get together with a great group of guys. And there's mentoring times, but there's also fellowship times and activities. We have we have so much fun and lives are transformed. We call it Brotherhood Breakthrough and Adventure because every one of them is. You can go to menonthefrontlines.com to find out more. Or if you want to make it really easy, just email me, robert at menonthefrontlines.com, and I'll get you the information. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I know somebody I'll have to tell you later who may be going to that. Okay. And then, so you can also go to roberthotchkin.com 
which I think will also take you to men on the front yes. line. The senior yep. website, it's legit. I don't know who did it, but it's very beautiful. Um, so you can go to roberthodgkin.com and connect with him there. Go buy his books. They are powerful. And I would not just say that. I am not a big reader, and I have read the books I told you about at the beginning. They are mm. awesome. And then Instagram for all you Gen Z millennials, and then anybody else out there who's on Insta, um, go to R. Hodgkin or at R. Hodgkin. And then also you can follow Robert's public page, which I believe I tagged in this post on Facebook. He does great lives. You get to see his shows that he stream broadcast each week. They're awesome. They're insightful. It's just another resource to be encouraged by the Lord. And then Robert, do you have anything you want to add before we close out? I just want to say thank you to everybody who's watching your show, that they're willing to believe that God is well able and that with him, we're able to turn the tide. And I want to thank you, Jamie Lynn, for doing this show, for helping us have vision for the next America that is a, an America of love and light and unity and wisdom. And we're going to see it because God is good and he is not done with this nation. He's not mad at this nation. He has a plan and we're all part of it. And that's really, really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. I encourage you guys to follow Robert. And I also encourage you to go follow us on Instagram at the next America show. This is so cool, guys. I have gone through and I have discovered leaders of departments in our nation, in our government that I didn't even know their name, that they were over a department and I'm making decrees and posting right on. on the next America show. And we are decreeing. I don't care what political party they are. We're decreeing that evil will be uprooted and that they will be able to fulfill the perfect word of God. So join us on at the next America on Instagram, or you can go to my public page on Facebook to get these beautiful decrees. And once again, what we do today affects the next America. And I believe God has good plans for us and we can be part of it, but we have to go into the nation as a great, great commission. Um, you know, it's like a commandment go, you know, it's not just like a cute suggestion, though he does give us the free will to choose. But let's go in Jesus' name. Anyways, I will catch you guys next week at 7.30 p.m. Super pumped about what God's doing. Thank you once again, Robert. You're so loved. And I will catch you guys next Sunday.